In this video, we're gonna talk about the different file formats that can be used with Photoshop. I'm gonna tell you which one to use for what and kind of explain what each one does. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe and today we're doing our Back to Basics in Photoshop and we're looking at file format. So we're going to look at the common file formats inside of Photoshop and I'm going to explain pluses and minuses of each one and what you should use them for. Now if you're the person that came to watch this video just to get the skinny on it really quickly, I'm going to give it to you right now. You're welcome. So when you're saving your files, you want to save them either as a PSD or a PSB. You'll use a PSB when the file is bigger than 2 terabytes or larger than 30,000 pixels. If you want to deliver for print or high quality lossless, you're going to be using a TIFF file. If you want to output it for digital or for the web, your delivery format is a JPEG. Unless you want animation, then you're going to be using a GIF. Now, if you want to use transparency and you want to have the digital file, you want to be working in a PNG, otherwise known as a ping. So if that was helpful to you, smash the like button right now. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe right now to Photoshop Cafe and turn on the notification. So where do we find all these file types? Well, when we just choose file, save as, you're gonna get a lot of these options right here. All right, for the rest of you, I'm gonna slow it down a little bit now, and we're gonna go through the different file formats in a little bit more depth. So there's two different families of file types we're gonna be working with. Archival or working files, and delivery files. Okay, so a PSD file is great because one, it's a lossless format. That means that we're not losing any quality in our image as we save it and resave it. And also it stores a lot of information such as all the layer information, masks, guides, channels, uh, type layers, all these types of things are all saved inside of a PSD. You'll even find that things like vanishing point, when you close it and then you open it back up, all that information is all retained inside a PSD. So it makes it a perfect format to be working in. And in fact, I always use that as my working file. Now, sometimes the files get a little bit big. So there's a limit on a PSD. So a PSD can only go up to 30,000 pixels in height or width and it has a maximum of two gigabyte space. So if you wanna go larger than that, that's when you choose a PSB, which stands for Photoshop Big. And a PSB can go up to 300,000 pixels across or up, and it can also go up to four exabytes in size. How big is an exabyte? Well, so a thousand megabytes is a gigabyte. A thousand gigabytes is a terabyte. A thousand terabytes is a petabyte, which is the next standard we're gonna see. And then a thousand petabytes is an exabyte. So we've got quite a bit of room to grow there. So that's basically your main home base that we're gonna be working with is in the PSD. So the next one I wanna talk about, which could either be an archival working or it could be a delivery format is a TIFF. TIFF stands for tagged image format. And a TIFF of course can be eight bit or 16 bit. So the thing about a TIFF now is it can do a lot of the same things as a PSD because Adobe owns it. Uh, TIFF was invented by Aldis and then Adobe acquired them. TIFF is presently in version six, I believe. And so it supports layers and all these other things. Now TIFF has been used a lot in the print industry. So when you're sending off an image to print to an offset printer, you're sending off the TIFF file, or maybe you're using it to embed it in a Quark document, remember Quark? Or, you know, inside of a InDesign document, although InDesign also supports PSD. Now you could save your files as a TIFF, but I don't, and this is the simple reasoning, is if I see a PSD, I know I have a layered file. And I know if I open that, my layers and everything in there, and I can work from it. When I see a TIFF file, in my case, I know it's gonna be a flattened file. Now I save out the TIFF file for printing because that TIFF file is a lossless format. So that means even though it does support compression such as LZW compression or things like that, it doesn't throw away any pixels. So I can save it and save it again and it's not losing quality. So if somebody asks for an image for print such as a magazine, newspaper, or things like that, I'll be using that as a TIFF file and also when I'm printing. I will get the dimensions how I want it I will do the sharpening, the finishing, getting it ready to go, and then I'll save it out as a TIFF, and usually I'll give the dimensions, the print dimensions, as its file name, and then whenever I wanna print that, say I do a limited edition of 10 or 20 or 50 prints, I can be printing from that TIFF because that's my print file. 
The next one we're going to look at is a JPEG. We've all heard of that one. And JPEG stands for Joint Photographic Experts Group. So the thing about a JPEG is think of this as a print. Don't think of it as an original. This is purely a delivery file. So that means you work in your PSD and then when you finished, you export it as a JPEG. And the reason for that is a JPEG is compressed, which means it's a very small file size, which makes it easy for transmission over the internet. You can email it, you can put it on web pages. In fact, when you upload images to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all these kind of things. And JPEGs work very well. It's the best way to compress what's known as a continuous image format, which is a photograph. So it gets the best quality. Now, as you turn up the compression, the file size is going to get smaller and you're going to lose more information. Okay, so here we have an image. If I decide to save this as a JPEG, I can choose File, Export. So we can export, change it as a JPEG, or we can set the quick export to JPEG. But I'm going to go into Safer Web so I can show you something. So here's the image. Let me just put this on the screen so we can see it all. And if we look at this, we've got it set to JPEG right now. The quality is 79. If you set it at about 70 or above, you're not really going to notice much loss of any in quality visually. Now, if I turn this up to 100, let me just show you something. So this is uncompressed at 100 or minimum compression. And if you look at it, it's 3.9 megabytes. So that's about a 4 megabyte file. If I take this and I drag it all the way down to zero, notice now it's only 244 kilobytes. So it's much, much smaller, but it's losing a lot of quality. In fact, why don't we go up to 100% and we can see this. So if we view this at 100% and then we look at this dog here, see how it's done to just kind of break up a little bit. We can see it there and you can also see it here in the fur, see how it's just getting matted and these speckles and things like that. This is known as artifacting or artifacts. And that's what you get when you over compress an image. Let me take the quality back up to 100% and notice now how all the hairs and the fur and everything become much sharper, much cleaner. Now, if I take this down to about 70, you're going to see a little bit of compression, but not a ton. If I take it to 75, you're probably not even going to see any at all. So you want to create that JPEG because you want a file that's smaller that you can email and do different things like that with. And also when you upload it to web pages and different things like that, you find that compression balance between the file size and the quality so things load quickly in the internet and they can easily be transferred and shared with other people. So the JPEG only supports 8 bits per channel, that's 256 colors per channel, which is fine for most purposes with photographic, but it doesn't support 16 or 32 bits, such as the PSD or the TIFF supports 16 bit. JPEG also does not support any transparency or any animation. So JPEG is kind of like the format that you use for sharing a photograph. Now, some online printers ask you to send a JPEG, which is fine, because if the compression's turned up fine, the photo is going to look fine. But here's the thing. You don't open a JPEG, work with it, and then save it again as a JPEG, and then work with it, and then save it again as a JPEG. So you're going to get what's known as generational loss. So that means every time you save it, you get a new generation, but it's recompressing and recompressing, and the quality is slowly going to deteriorate over time. So that's why you want to be working in that PSD, create a JPEG. If you want to make changes, go back to that PSD, make the changes, save the PSD, export a new JPEG, replace it. That's a good way of working. Now, there's another format that you might have heard of as a PNG or otherwise pronounced as a ping. And it comes in two different flavors. It comes in a ping 8 and a ping 24. Let's talk about a ping 24 first. A ping 24 is a lossless format for images and works really well with photographs. And a PNG, of course, stands for Portable Network Graphics. And that was really designed for sharing files and working with files for multimedia purposes. Now, the drawback of it, of course, is that the file sizes are larger than a JPEG. So if you were going to send an image for use, for consumption, generally you would send it in a JPEG because it's smaller than the PNG. And it wouldn't look that different to the naked eye, a PNG versus the JPEG at high quality. But the thing is, the PNG is going to be a lot bigger. So the PNG is a bigger file. But of course, if you're working with development, things like screens, different things like that, it works really well. And the other thing about the PNG is it supports 256 levels of transparency, which means that you can get nice fading with the transparency there. So it works really well, you know, when you have transparent backgrounds, overlays, different things like that. I also mentioned the Ping 8. Now the Ping 8 is an 8-bit 
uh, PNG, which is actually very similar to a GIF or a GIF, depending on how you want to call it. But let's talk about that for a second. So GIF, as I like to call it, because it stands for Graphics Interchange Format. And graphics is a hard G. You don't say GFX Interchange Format. Which way do you say it? Let me know in the comments, GIF or GIF. And there's good arguments either way, by the way. So my, what I'm saying is not necessarily right. It's just how I like it. GIF sounds normal. GIF sounds weird to me. So anyway, <laughs> moving on. So a GIF is a way to reduce the file format. And it was something used a lot more in the early days of web. And of course, it still has purpose. I'll talk about that in a sec. But what a GIF can do is it reduces it down to 256 colors. So this is known as indexing the color. So it takes all the colors and puts them into an index table known as a color lookup table. So yep, just like lots of Photoshop, except you know, a little bit different, but that's where they came from. So the lookup table there reduces 256 colors and then it throws away all the colors that are not in those 256 and moves them and shifts them to the closest color. That's why when you look at GIFs, sometimes they can look very posterized. Now, GIFs are really good for things like text, line art, solid color. They actually reproduce those better than a JPEG because of the way the compression works because those are more based on form than they are color. Things like gradients, of course, are gonna look better in JPEGs than they are in a GIF. So why would you use a GIF? Well, simple, animation and transparency. So animated GIFs, believe it or not, yep, well, you know, they're a thing again. Giphy, look at it all, that stuff, or Jiffy, however you want to call it. Um, GIFs are back, here they are. They only support binary transparency, what does that mean? That means that it's either transparent or it's solid. It doesn't support multiple, you know, gradients of transparency or semi-transparent. So you'll see it, you know, they kind of look blocky around the edges. Uh, different things like that so they're still used in web and uh, interfaces you know making icons and different things like that so anyway unless you're really doing you know that animation a gif is not necessarily a format you would be using a lot so the ping 8 came along as kind of like a replacement for gif in some ways although it didn't support animation but at that time you know uh, web animation gifs were kind of dead so everyone was kind of using flash and scalable vector formats and different things like that were kind of popular at that time even though occasionally you would use an animated gif but they were kind of frowned upon a lot in the web circles uh, at that time so the the ping 8 was a way to produce the same kind of result you would get as a gif but you would get uh, a smaller file size. Then of course, when the Ping 24 came along, um, it wasn't so much used for trying to comp create compressed files for the web, but it was very useful because of the multi-layers of transparency. And in fact, you use it a lot for overlays and video and different things like that. Even when you're working in Photoshop, you can take those PNGs or those Pings in and you get that beautiful transparency. So it's used a lot for logos, uh, badges, buttons, banners, bugs, things like that. It's very popular. All right, so let's just bring it all home and make it simple here. So when you're working on your files, you wanna be working in the PSD as your working format. That's where you're gonna save your master file as a PSD. That's the, your working file. Then when you output it, if you're gonna be printing it or sending it off to a commercial offset printer or some printers, you're gonna be saving it as a TIFF. That TIFF is, is lossless, it's, it's fine. And also the TIFF also supports CMYK and RGB, so is, same as Photoshop. Out of all these formats, that's the only two formats that we're talking about right now that support CMYK. Right, so we're good there. All right, so now if you're gonna be sending out an image, you're gonna be putting it on the web, putting it on Facebook, Instagram, social media, sending it out to some online places for print that ask for it, emailing it, putting it on your website, you're gonna be outputting a JPEG. So most of what you're gonna be concerned with is a PSD and a JPEG for delivery. Sometimes you're gonna be doing a PSD and a TIFF for delivery. Now, if you want animation, you're gonna be using a GIF. If you want that transparency in that flattened file so you can use it for overlays and all those kinds of things, then you're gonna use a Ping24. The thing I think you really should think about is you wanna get the best quality and think about like PSD is at the top and then GIF is probably at the bottom. Um, so you've got PSD, TIFF, JPEG, well, and maybe yeah, probably PING24, then JPEG, PING8, and then GIF. And yes, I know there's other file formats, but think about that. You never wanna try and work up. 
you always want to work down. So work on the files up here, save them as the ones under there. And if you need to make changes, go back to the original and save it again, because you're going to get lost as you go down that chain of different images. And don't go further down the chain than what you need. And as I said before, a lot of photographers, all you have to worry about is shoot in RAW, edit it in Photoshop, save it as a PSD, and deliver it as a JPEG. For designers, you're going to be doing working in a PSD and delivering it as a TIFF most of the time. So I've got a couple of questions for you. First of all, was this useful? Did you learn anything? Was it a good refresher or was it an eye opener for you? Let me know in the comments. And the second question is, what would you like to see me cover inside of this Photoshop basics show uh, series, whatever you want to call it, back to basics? Uh, put your suggestions in the comments and let me know because this one was actually a result of a lot of people asking about different file formats. There's a lot of things we do every day we don't necessarily understand and that's what I want to address in this series of the Photoshop Basics I'm going to be doing each weekend. Now every Tuesday I do a regular Photoshop tutorial and every Thursday at 1 p.m. Pacific time we do a live stream where we all come together and join us this Thursday. Love to have you there. And by the way, if you're new, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. Consider hitting that subscribe button, become part of the cafe crew, turn on the notifications so you know when I upload a new video. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. And animated GIFs used to be, you know, probably what killed MySpace, that and bad music. But oh, oh, I did not say that. Oh. So if we start, there's five levels inside a PSD and we're going to go maybe a little deeper than you want to go here. So I'll try and keep it a little bit simple. We've got the file header, which describes the file. It tells what size it is. The color mode data, which really only matters if you're working on something like a duotone. Then we've got the image resources. And this is where a lot of the stuff gets saved inside the PSD. And a fifth group of things saved inside the PSD. Okay, wow, that's just way too much.